Okay, so the topic of today's video is going to be the ozone layer and its depletion. So let's go ahead and get started. So what is the ozone layer? Well, it's the portion of Earth's atmosphere that absorbs UV radiation from the sun. Like you see in the animation, the ozone layer kind of acts like a shield that surrounds the Earth and tries to prevent the incoming UV rays from striking the surface of the Earth. Now, as wonderful as the ozone layer is, it's not 100% effective. Some UV radiation does strike the surface of the Earth, but it does a really good job in protecting the Earth from incoming UV radiation. And so the ozone layer is located in, a port in the lower portion of the Earth's stratosphere, which is one of the layers of the atmosphere. Well, let's go and see how ozone is formed. So then how is ozone formed? Well, it all starts when an incoming uh, photon of UV, of UV light strikes a molecule of oxygen, O2, the oxygen that we breathe. The UV, the UV light will cause this oxygen molecule to split into individual oxygen atoms. Well, ozone, which is O3, forms when one of those oxygen atoms bonds with another O2 in the atmosphere. You know, 1 plus 2 equals 3. And so if you missed it, here comes another incoming photon of UV light, which strikes an O2 molecule. That causes the O2 molecule to be broken apart, forming O3. And one more time if you missed it. Incoming UV breaks apart an O2, forming O3. So this has been you know, happening for millions and millions and millions of years in our atmosphere. And so the, uh, the ozone, ozone layer absorbs UV radiation, but you know, it's not really just an ozone layer. There's more than just ozone. Yes, there is O3 in the ozone layer. O3 is ozone. There's also O2, which is the oxygen that we breathe, O2. And there's also just regular uh, single oxygen atoms. And so here comes a, a UV photon that strikes a, a, an O3 molecule. O3 again is ozone. So what happens is the UV light is going to cause that O3 to be broken apart. But that's okay, because notice what happened. That single oxygen atom bonded with an O2 to recreate a molecule of ozone. If you missed it, here it is again. UV will break apart an O3. That's okay, because a new O3 is formed. And if you missed it, UV breaks apart an O3, that's okay, another O3 is formed. And one more time, UV breaks apart an O3 ozone molecule, only to form another one. So the ozone layer, or the ozone in ozone molecules in the ozone layer are wonderful at blocking out certain types of UV radiation, particularly UVB and UVC radiation. But also, there's uh, also O2. O2 in the ozone layer. And O2 actually does a pretty good job of blocking out other forms of UV radiation as well. When UV strikes an O2, that will, uh, it'll break apart the O2 to form ozone. Notice how a UV is striking an O2, breaks apart the O2, forming ozone. But notice how in the animation so far, none of the UVs have actually reached the surface of the Earth. Now, as wonderful as this shield is, you know, the ozone shield is not 100% effective. Some UV light will ultimately reach the surface of the Earth, and we'll talk about those negative side effects in a moment. So when we look at how the uh, when we look at the state of the ozone layer today, we need to discuss chlorofluorocarbons. These are man-made molecules common to aerosols, refrigerator and air conditioning coolants, and foam production. So here's a molecule of CFCs, chlorofluorocarbons. And what happens is UV UV radiation, UV energy will break apart the chlorine from the rest of the CFC molecule, and it's really the chlorine that does the damage. The chlorine will then attach itself to an O3 ozone molecule and break away one of the oxygen atoms. It's not ozone anymore, it's just had an oxygen removed. But chlorine's not quite done. That chlorine can be freed when its oxygen atom bonds with another oxygen atom and that will free up the chlorine in order to repeat this process. The freed up chlorine can then 
rip away an oxygen from another O3. And once the chlorine is freed, again, it can repeat the process and break away another uh, break apart another ozone molecule. So in this animation, I had one chlorine destroying three ozone molecules. Well, in reality, chlorine is a very sturdy, uh, very long-lasting um, atom up here and can actually last for decades, destroying tens and hundreds of thousands of ozone molecules. So we saw this earlier, you know, what is the ozone layer? At this point, I hope you understand that it's a shield that surrounds the Earth and, and blocks incoming UV radiation. So then what is ozone layer depletion? Well, it's the thinning of the ozone layer. If you look in the animation, notice how the ozone layer has been thinned due to the use of chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs. And as you see in the animation, this is causing more and more UV radiation to strike the surface of the Earth. And so these are some of the negative side effects of that. UV exposure causes skin cancers, eye cataracts. It impairs and weakens our immune system. It stunts and harms the growth of crops, kills phytoplankton, which is the basis of marine and ocean ecosystems. So these are some of the side effects of, of, uh, of decades and decades of use of chlorofluorocarbons. So I'd like to finish with an awareness timeline that kind of brings us to where we are today. In 1974, a couple scientists discovered that chlorofluorocarbons, particularly the chlorine from a CFC, can break down ozone. And this kind of set us down a path to trying to find a resolution to this problem. In 1978, the United States banned the use of CFCs in aerosol cans. That ban is still in existence today. In 1984, over Antarctica, a seasonal hole in the ozone layer was discovered. And then in 1987, an international agreement known as the Montreal Protocol agreed to phase down the use of CFCs. And you can see in the graph, the amount of CFCs rises until you get to the 1990s, and then they start to flatten out and even start to decrease. And this is, I wanna end with a very positive note that the outlook for, for ozone depletion is quite promising. It's predicted that in the next 50, 60 years, possibly by 2050, 2060, in that time frame, we're gonna see a return to the 1980 levels of ozone in the atmosphere. So this is one of those cases where, you know, when the world agrees to solve a problem, you know, we can see some positive effects. So that's it for this video. Go ahead and post your thoughts below. And if you have any questions, perhaps I can try to respond to them. Thank you for watching.